The first thing to do is to take measurements. Think about how big you want the booth to be and where you want to place it. I've decided to build my booth in the corner of the room away from the adjoining wall with my neighbours. I have a sloping ceiling so I want to follow the contour of the ceiling so that I can have as much space as I can. I will not build it so it actually touches the ceiling. I want to have as little contact as possible between the booth and the walls, the floor and the ceiling to minimise the sound transmission. I have designed it so I have just enough space to sit with a music stand. This way I can cut down on the cost of the materials. Ideally I want to build a booth that has a sound transmission class rating of 60 or above. That would mean that when a door is closed no sound is heard outside. But I also want it to be cost effective so I will settle for a lesser rating. I will build it from the outside in, that way I can test it as I build it, so I can judge whether I need to add more layers of soundproofing materials. You might want to start with the base. You will need to consider whether you want to put the base on pads or wheels so that it's movable. My booth will be heavy and situated on carpet, which might mean that it may still be difficult to move even with wheels, so I'm going to put it on pads. Here I have a wooden base, a wooden framework filled with insulation and a wooden top. Eventually it will be covered with carpet or a soundproofing rubber mat. You'll probably need more joists or supports in the base to make it more secure, but remember sound will travel through the joists or studs, so try to keep these to a minimum. Wood is not the best material for soundproofing, but it's strong and the base needs to support my weight. You might need to line the base with extra materials depending on how soundproof you want the booth to be. I will discuss materials later. You will need to build a framework. This can be done in sections, covered with the outer material, attached together and finally fixed to the base. When designing the frame, you want to think about whether you want something that can be easily disassembled and rebuilt, or to create something more permanent. I want to build something permanent and cost effective, which will simplify the design. Otherwise, I would have to design smaller panels that slot into each other. Once the framework is built, you could opt for a cheaper version of an isolation booth by covering it with acoustic blankets or furniture removal blankets as a cheaper option. For more soundproofing, there is a choice of materials that could be used on the outside and inside of the framework. You could use OSB boards, MDF, plywood or plasterboard or drywall. Of all these, plasterboard or drywall will be the best at soundproofing due to its mass. A wooden stud with a 16mm or 5 8 drywall on both sides of a stud will give an STC rating of about 35 with no insulation and an STC rating of 38 with insulation. If you have two plasterboards or drywalls on both sides of the studs with insulation, this will increase the STC rating to 45. Having an air gap between the drywalls will increase the STC rating further. This can be achieved by using green glue or some alternative. Having staggered studs will also increase the STC rating. For insulation, fiberglass seems to be a cheaper alternative to products like rock wall and may be more cost effective overall. Make sure you check the safety aspects of the insulation you are going to use. In this design, the insulation is fully sealed within the framework, but you might need to further seal it with a plastic sheet so no fibers get in the air. To increase the STC rating further, you could add mass loaded vinyl. This comes in different thicknesses and so different mass. The more mass, the more soundproofing there will be. Mass loaded vinyl is good for soundproofing but can be expensive. But the advantage is that it is a thin material compared to other options. So for the best option, I could use two sheets of drywall with a space between them created with the green glue and the same for the other side of the stud. I can line them with the mass loaded vinyl and also put insulation inside it. But this might be overdoing it just a tad. But whatever you do for the walls, you would have to do something similar for the base so that the sound does not escape through the base. Also, you will need to seal the edges so that there are no gaps for the sound to escape through. There are many acoustic sealants on the market. Since I will place my booth in the corner of the room, it will only have two sides that will not be facing the walls, floor or ceiling. Special care will need to be taken with these two walls as they will be seen by anyone in the room. I've decided to build a door frame with a door which will leave a smaller space to deal with. Now what would be nice is to have glass or thick polycarbonate like that used for drumming booths. The advantage would be that there will be a lot of natural light. The disadvantage is that it will let out sound more than if the wall was constructed in a similar manner to the other walls. I've decided to take the latter option. The last thing to consider is providing ventilation, which I will consider whether it is needed once I've started using the booth. 
Well, let me know if I made any mistakes in my design or if I've overlooked anything. I will continue to improve my design and hopefully we'll start building it later this year.